Welcome to a special edition of Investor Ideas Podcast. Today, I'm speaking with the CEO, Craig Frank, and senior consultant, Dave Jones of Kaya Holdings, Inc., trading on the OTCQB under the symbol K-A-Y-S. Kaya Holdings is a mind care company focusing on wellness and mental health through operations in medical and recreational cannabis, CBD products, and psychedelic treatment clinics. Kaya has the historical distinction of being the first U.S. publicly traded company to hold and operate cannabis licenses in the the touch-the-plant category when it commenced cannabis operations in Portland, Oregon in 2014. In this podcast, we discuss the new opportunities and many benefits in the medical psychedelic market and how Kaya Holdings is leading the way once again as innovators and pioneers in the sector. We also talk about their move to open one of the first state-licensed psilocybin treatment centers in the United States in Portland, Oregon. What makes this podcast special is to hear management go deep and share their personal experiences and show that they care about community. We discuss mental health and how it has personally affected us all. It is a rare opportunity to get such a personal insight from a management team and opportunity to find a public company with heart. I hope you all enjoy, listen, and share this interview. To learn more about Kaya Holdings, you can visit their website at www.kayaholdings.com or reach out to the team at info at kayaholdings.com. Craig and Dave, thank you so much for joining us on the show. For listeners that are new to Kaya Holdings story, can you give us a brief background of the history and how you moved from cannabis into the psychedelic space and what the similarities and differences you're seeing in between the two industries are. Sure. Thanks for uh, having us today. Case was really a pioneer in the public company Canada space. We were actually the first touch the plant publicly traded company in the U.S. opening our first Kayashack store way back in 2014. We built a substantial footprint. We had four cannabis stores, a 12,000-square-foot growth facility, 26 and a half acres to expand our growth capacity. And somewhere around 2018, we really lost all confidence in any possibility that federal regulation would change and allow for a more sustainable business model here in the U.S. And at that time, we began to shift our focus to Europe with some additional capacity here in the States, we began to look for how to utilize that capacity, and Dave actually brought to our attention uh, psychedelics, and we were attracted to it really for the same reasons that we were attracted to cannabis, which is that they're both earth-given natural remedies that have long been denied to people who could benefit from them. And uh, this long period of prohibition builds a pent-up demand, which in turn creates a good business opportunity. As the conversation around psilocybin began to gather steam, we saw a lot of similarities in its evolution and the evolution of cannabis, and we realized that we had a unique set of experiences and operational history that could really be successfully applied to the psilocybin space. One of the exciting aspects in the psilocybin market has been the groundswell of interest also from the big pharma companies because there's research that's suggesting that psilocybin is a effective medication for a patient pool that amounts to over 100 million people worldwide. We have the health, international health care emergency, and traditional antidepressants and other psychiatric medications simply aren't working. The crisis is real. You know, about 800,000 people a year are committing suicide around the world. Think about that. It's one every 40 seconds or 65,000 people a month. Add to this the family members and other loved ones and the scope of the pain, you know, it's, it's astronomical. So there's a really an urgent need for new treatment approaches, and it's becoming clearer and clearer that psychedelics could meet that need. In fact, the U.S. psychedelic market alone is 
now about $2.8 billion and is forecasted to reach about $9 billion by 2029. So there's lots of growth here, lots of opportunity here, and lots of chance to uh, bring relief to a lot of people who need it. Dive a little deeper into that. You've recently just announced securing your site for the Sacred Mushroom Psilocybin Treatment Center. Can you talk to us about the space and some of the planned treatments that you're going to offer? Yeah, it was really important for us that the facility be in a central location because uh, we think that community is going to be a big part of the healing process, and we were really lucky to find the the perfect location. Uh, The space is the entire top floor of a building in downtown Portland called the Falcon Building. It's about 11,000 square feet giving us really the areas we need for both private and group experiences. We have creativity centers, sensory rooms, reflection areas. There's really room to roam and explore. We also have a fully equipped kitchen, which we'll be able to use to provide food once Oregon regulation permits. That's amazing. Uh, As your planned site is in Oregon, let's talk about the treatment centers in place so far and what makes yours different. First, you know, a lot of really well-meaning and knowledgeable people have opened up some very good facilities. But I'd say that there are four primary differences between us and what we've seen so far. Um, The first is really the space itself. A huge contributing factor to the quality of a psychedelic experience is the setting, and ours is really, it's extraordinary. Another difference would be the extent to which we aim to cater the journey to the individual's preference. We have sound, sight, scent options, and activity options. The third, I'd say, would be the community we seek to create. While we cater to out-of-state visitors, our emphasis will be on serving the needs of the greater Portland area. And finally, I'd say that our pricing model is different. We're looking to uh, make it as as sustainable a treatment for those who seek it as possible. And in this end, we have some lesser expensive microdosing options. I love that you keep using the word community as well, because since the last few years, it's definitely something that people need. Compared to your peers in the public sector, a lot of them are a little farther off from offering treatment centers comparatively to where you are. There's a lot of different avenues for psychedelic space. Can you give us some insight as to your short-term vision and the plan for the longer-term vision as where you would like to see this go? Really, the work of companies like ATA, Life Sciences, symbol ATAI, Compass Pathways out of the U.K., CMPS is fascinating, and we're excited to see what their research can tell us about the medicinal possibilities of psilocybin. Now, let's say Compass Pathways. They're developing their own synthetic versions, what they plan to sell the treatment facilities. Our model is a little bit different. It calls for the use of natural psilocybin and or the extract psilocin, in our own facilities. We believe our model is more immediate and allows us to avoid the long, laborious, very costly, very tenuous FDA process. We expect to begin offering treatments immediately upon licensing of our facility. We expect to work with pharma by leveraging the research that can be extracted through our activities, including companies like Compass. For point of reference, Compass Pathways, in they have a fantastic website of all the research they've done. If you look at their research on psilocybin, what the effects are and how it works, they very honestly point out that those statistics are derived not from the study of their synthetic version, but from natural psilocybin. We have submitted our license application to the Oregon Health Authority actually going in the end of the day today. We're hoping to schedule a required inspection soon. And, of course, we'll keep the investors updated when exactly we're going to open. And just to go a little more into your treatments, you will be offering a microdose, and will you be offering a macrodose treatment as well, or are you just going to mainly focus on the microdosing effects? We are offering the full range of treatments 
if you look back in our press releases we've had recently, we explained the uh, current pricing options that are available out there. Most of the centers the, what, that are already uh, constructed are much smaller. So their microdosing options just by design, it just doesn't work because they would have to charge too much per treatment. We're looking at a much lower cost treatment on the microdosing as well as on the full therapeutic dose. And for point of reference, the microdosing, there are many studies and there's a lot of interest by different people. There's even a group, Moms for Microdosing, uh, new mothers dealing with postnatal depression, where there's found to be some benefits to systematically taking very small doses, what they call non-therapeutic uh, doses, so you're not experiencing a, a hallucinogenic psychedelic episode, but that over time it's very beneficial to depression, mood elevation, creativity, and just positive well-being. But actually, the area of the facility that we've developed for the full-blown psychedelic experience, if you will, isn't like anything that, that's out there. We're very excited about unveiling it to the public. It seems there's so many benefits and so many opportunities in the psilocybin sector. Are there any personal reasons why you chose to venture into the psychedelic psilocybin space? And can you share any personal stories about the positive impact that you've seen from these treatments? I think it's really hard to find an American family that doesn't have someone with a mental disorder affecting their personal story, whether it's a sibling, a parent, or a child, or a friend. There's something in the way that we live that causes profound pain and disorder to some people. And our involvement in some ways is motivated to bring this relief both to those we love and to those other people love. I, I would just jump in here for a second, Kelly. My wife's cousin, who actually came out and worked for us at the Kaya Shack in Portland, very, very nice guy, struggled with depression for years. He eventually took his own life, as did another family member, unre unrelated to him, as did our manager in the state of Oregon. His son took his own life. I don't know anybody you can talk to that forget about even just mental health issues. Suicide with 65,000 people a month committing suicide it touches everyone. Everyone has a connection. They, they either have someone in their family or they know someone or they know someone that's struggling with the after effects uh, of a family member taking their, their life. The, the idea here is we're looking to do well while we do something good. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. It's, it's great to find a company that, you know, is looking to actually yeah build and become a real company, but also that they care about the community, like you've used the word so many times, and that you care about the people around you and really acknowledge that mental health is such an issue in North America right now. Psilocybin treatments have been known to aid in remedying a lot of different uh, medical condition, mental conditions, including things like anorexia and eating disorders. Uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, alcoholism, and drug addiction. The number of people who are either carrying the burden of these conditions or the people who love them, who watch them carrying the burdens and try to help them while they carry this burden is astronomical. And the, the opportunity to lessen that load for everybody is gratifying. It's a, a nice place to be in this moment in this medical development opportunity in its coming to the market. Well, it sounds like you guys are pioneers in the space and you care. And, you know, those are two very important things when investors are looking at a company. 
So I'd like to switch over a little more onto the investor side. You recently just announced financing completed for Kaya. Can we talk about some of the financing and the share structure for potential investors listening to the story today? We recently announced that we had raised approximately 600000 in in, uh, cash, all of which is non-dilutive for public company shareholders, as it is a working capital loan that is not convertible to K stock. This is this is not a convertible debenture. Uh, we will be issuing stock at a discount to market. The funds came primarily from an institutional investor that has worked with us for years, and they see the unique opportunities available to to uh, Kaya within the psilocybin treatment industry. The potential good that we can provide the people that are suffering. That being said, we remain in capital recruitment mode and welcome inquiries from potential investors. Our stock structure is very attractive. We have approximately 22 million common shares outstanding, with our latest analysis showing approximately 9 million shares deposited in DTC, held by approximately 6,000 shareholders. As you are both in the cannabis and psilocybin space, what are your thoughts on the two sectors and where do you see the sectors going for the next year? Can you also give us just a quick breakdown of what you're still doing in the cannabis space? Cannabis and psilocybin are uh, similar, as I mentioned before, in that they're both natural remedies that have long been denied to people who could benefit from them. I think that we're very attracted to being in the front lines of these efforts cannabis in the sector, we are maintaining our flagship Portland uh, Kai Shack Cannabis Shop, and we're developing now an indoor cannabis cultivation facility in Apitabus, Greece, which is about an hour and 20 minutes north of Athens. That facility is a 50,000 square foot building divided into two sections and will be an EU GMP uh, rated facility to service the European market. We're pretty excited about the opportunities of the European market. There are a number of years behind the U.S. in terms of its uh, development and seems to be a little bit more cohesive when it comes to regulation. Uh, in the psilocybin treatment sector, the Portland facility is really ground zero for the industry treatment development other states have begun to develop their legal framework, and most of them are following the facilitated clinic model. So we intend to scale up our participation in the industry using the Portland beachhead. Our model for treatment and our local market business model really gives us a tremendous growth opportunity. We believe once we initiate the operations of the sacred mushroom in Portland, uh, all of this will become much more apparent. Can you give us a little background on the psilocybin that you are sourcing for your treatment center and if you're planning on building a growth facility for that as well down the road? Now, first of all, the, the regulation permits sort of one family of psilocybin mushroom only. Right now, there are a number of licensed growers in the state, but our um, intent is to grow the mushrooms that we offer to our visitors right there in the facility itself. We have space uh, placed aside for it. We will soon be getting that underway. We've actually sourced equipment uh, from General Electric for the the growing and cultivation of mushrooms. That's very exciting. So we will wrap this up. For our listeners interested in learning more, uh, can you tell us a little bit of where they connect, follow you, your website, And obviously, if you want to talk a little bit of where they can connect for the treatment center as well for anyone that's interested. We're in the process of updating our corporate website as well as uh, launching a separate website for the Sacred Mushroom Treatment Center. So we would ask that interested parties email us to join our email list, info at kayaholdings, with an S, dot com. Info at kayaholdings with an S, dot com. And you can also follow us on Twitter, at Kaya Holdings, to receive the latest news, pictures, and updates regarding the launch of the Sacred Mushroom Treatment Center, and as well as for 
the stock. Thank you guys so much for joining the show today. I think that was fantastic story to share with our listeners and I hope they uh, all go follow your site and keep an eye on the company. And as always, podcast is now a certified word trademark on Cognate Incorporated CM certification. And if you would like to be a guest or sponsor of this podcast, please contact InvestorIdeas.com. Investor Ideas reminds all listeners to read our disclaimers and disclosures on the InvestorIdeas.com website. And this podcast is not an endorsement to buy products or services or securities. Investors are reminded all investments involve risk and possible loss of investment.